Hey, Mario, that's some good gravy. Sex Kitten Studio announcer Grace, and now your host, Michael Dulick. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. And now, standing nearly seven feet tall and weighing in at, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the world's biggest chef, Chef Mario Manfredini. Buongiorno a tutti and buongiorno Megaluzza. Mario, so on today's show, you're going to be sharing and demonstrating for us your famous recipe for your meatballs a la Manfredini. You got it, Megaluzza. This is a secret family recipe that's been passed down from generation to generations from my great grand nonna back in Italia. That sounds absolutely delicious, Chef Mario. But my concern? Is it sanitary to have a smelly farm animal on premises when we're preparing food? Hey, pal. That smelly farm animal over there happens to be my 102-year-old uncle, Zio Pippo. Oh, so that goat is your uncle. All right, let me explain. You see, back in the old country, after the war, my uncle went hunting with some of his paisani for rabbit. You know, for the cacciatore. And somebody, we don't know who, accidentally shot my uncle instead. And the very next day, this goat showed up at my aunt's house. And he looks just like my uncle. So you're telling us that this goat is your reincarnated uncle, or Zio? Yeah. You don't believe me? Look, I got a picture of him right here. Well, I'd have to admit, the resemblance is pretty uncanny. But I am certainly not about to argue with an old family Italian folklore. I don't want to end up sleeping with the fishies. <laughs> so Chef Mario, what do you say we do some cooking? Let's tell the folks at home all the ingredients they're going to need to create your meatballs alla manfredini. And also, on this very program, for the very first time ever, he's going to tell us his secret ingredient to what makes his meatballs so tasty. Never before has a secret ingredient been revealed to the general public. You see, way back when, my great great grand nonna put a curse on anyone that would reveal the secret to our meatballs. A curse? Oh, that is so cute! Yeah, but I don't believe in that stuff. So at this time, right now, I'm going to reveal what our secret ingredient is. I'm so excited. Oh my god, I got chills! And the secret ingredient is... Oh my God, what just happened? That's ah, nothing, it's nothing, don't worry about it. it. Happens anytime someone wants to reveal the secret ingredient. I'm gonna make a phone call, take care of everything. Don't worry about anything. Why don't we roll the video? Hey, I look pretty good as a cartoon, huh? Okay, here's a what are you gonna need to make it a meat the balls. Six slices of hearty white sandwich bread. Why bread instead of bread crumbs? Because the white bread will make your meatballs nice and moist. Trust me, nobody likes dry balls. Next, three quarters of a cup of fresh parsley, six medium garlic cloves, and one medium onion. These are staple ingredients of any Italian recipe. And the garlic will make your whole house smell like my great great grandnona's kitchen or my cologne. Next, 
One and a half cups of buttermilk, three egg yolks, and one and a half cups of Pecorino Romano. The buttermilk and egg yolks will give your meatballs a richer flavor. And the cheese? Hey, who the fuck don't like cheese, right? Next, your basic spices. Self-explanatory. Next, ah, the main event. What I like to call the trilogy of meat. One pound ground beef, one pound ground pork, and one pound ground veal. And for all you vegans watching this, remember that bread you saw in the beginning? Just eat some of that, you poor bastards. Next. Uh, all right. I'm still trying to call in a couple of favors over here. I don't want to get whacked over a secret ingredient. You know what I mean? So let's just move on for now. Okay, so you want to core out the onion stems, because that's the part that makes you cry. And you want to be happy when you cook. No crying. So take them out. Big girls don't cry. They don't cry. Who's better than Frankie Valley? Nobody. Anyway, mince up that onion nice and nice and throw it in the bowl. Now you want to chop up that garlic really fine, but be careful with that big sharp knife. You don't want to find a finger in your meatballs. Which reminds me of a story about my Uncle Louie, who went missing a couple years back. They found a finger and other assorted body parts in some homemade says each. But that's a story for another time. Alright, garlic in the bowl. Now heat up that skillet, cover the pan with the extra virgin olive oil, then drop in your onions and garlic and saute. You throw in some spices and cook it all up until it's translucent, which is a big fancy word for kind of clear. And now your whole house is really starting to smell Italian. Nice. Then you drop it into a bowl and let it cool. Now slice the ends off your bread and uh, save it for the birds tomorrow morning. Cut up your bread into cubes. And into the bowl. Boom. Now we're gonna chop up the parsley nice and nice. Oh, and by the way, you wanna use the fresh Italian parsley, not that curly stuff. So mince it up nice and nice, and into the bowl it goes. And now the formaggio in slow motion. Grind it up into a nice cheesy pile. Mmm, smell that. So now we drop in our cooled onion and garlic into the big bowl with the bread. Pour in our buttermilk, the parsley, egg yolks, throw in some more spices, and now mash it all up with a fork, nice and nice into a paste. When the moon hits your eye like a big meatball in the sky. Now we throw in the trilogy of meats. And the cheese. And now the moment of truth. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ciao, ciao. I just got the okay to reveal the secret ingredient. I'm a little scared. Nah, nah. Don't worry about it. The secret ingredient is... Prosciutto! Oh my god, what a thing of beauty. Hey, I had to pull a lot of strings to reveal this secret ingredient, but nothing's too good for you, the viewer at home. And for all yous out there who think prosciutto is just Italian ham, let me tell you something, punk. Prosciutto is the undisputed king of lunch meats, and that's that. So chop it up nice and nice, and into the bowl it goes. And now you, my little Megaluzzo, are gonna mix this all up with your bare hands. Dig in. Oh, my God, I'm so excited, folks. Here I go. What's the matter, Mikey? I've just never had my hands with so much meat before. 
Ah, look at that. My little Migalutes is definitely a master handler of meat. And remember, always mix it with your bare hands to make sure all the ingredients are evenly distributed. Then form the mixture into a bunch of medium-sized balls. Come on, use your hands. Now, once more, we're gonna heat up the extra virgin olive oil in your skillet. And when it starts to shimmer, you're ready to gently place in the meatballs. And remember, you want to keep turning the meatballs on all sides so they fry up evenly. Because you definitely don't want to burn your balls. Gabish? And now, the meatballs in slow motion. You may ask, Mario, why all the jewelry when preparing the meatballs? Because in cooking, as in life, it's all about the presentation. So when the meatballs are crusty on all sides, take them out of the pan and place them on some paper towels to soak up the excess oil. And now we pour in a couple of jars of Mario's marinara into a big pot. Or as we like to refer to it in the Manfredini household, liquid gold. Let it simmer on low heat, then gently drop in your meatballs and let them cook another 30 minutes. Boom. I present to you the meatballs. Oh my gosh. Chef Mario, these look absolutely delicious. Thank you. Thank you. And I helped. You did. You, you know did. what? Joe, why don't you get a close up of Chef Mario's beautiful meatballs? Excuse me, Joe. Can you please get a close up of Chef Mario's beautiful meatballs? Joseph. Yeah. So, I want everybody to see Chef Mario's balls. <laughs> and we want to make sure that everyone at home picks up a few jars of your famous sauce because, Mario, that's some good gravy. Thanks, Megalutes. I hope everyone finds some fresh sauces that you could use on your pastas, your meatballs, your sausage, and even brajol. Brajol? Brajol. Brajol. No, no, no. Let me teach you. Okay. Bra. Bra. Jol. Jol. Brajol. Brajol. That's it. You got it. Awesome. So what is brajol? You don't know what brajol is? Mm-mm. <laughs> well, Michael, actually, brajol is a giant stuffed cylinder-shaped meat. Hmm. Oh, I've had that many times. Remember to pick up your very own jar of Mario's marinara, Mario's spicy arrabbiata, or my personal favorite, Mario's vodka sauce. To find a location near you, and for a copy of today's recipe, go to thatsomegoodgravy.com. When you walk in a dream, but you know you're not dreaming, Signore, excuse me, but you see back in old Napoli, that's our Cooking till a hey mambo, mambo italiano, hey mambo, mambo italiano, oh oh oh, you mixed up Sigiliano. <laughs>
It's a so delicious, everybody cup capisce how to mumble Mambo Italiano It's a nice <sighs>